funding crypto and blockchain from a venture capitalist's point of view. For our next panel, more about VCs slash crypto slash blockchain slash startups, we are really, I'm really excited to invite on this stage a moderator, Amir Roberto, co-founder and investor at Cinefy. Please give him a big hand, Amir Roberto. Also, please welcome here on stage as well, Alex Vavilov, investment director at iTech Capital. Please give him a big hand, louder. Thank you. Our next speaker, please put your hands together to welcome Valerie Holy, general partner at True Global Ventures. Be louder, please. Also, please give a big hand to Bang Huang, Chief Business Operator at IDCM. Be louder and don't be lazy clapping your hands. And our last but not least speaker, Artem Aksonov, Chief Research Officer at Uplift. Uplift. Give him a big hand. Uh, thank you so much, Amir. The floor is yours. And please listen attentively. Thank you very much. Everybody, good afternoon. This is our pleasure to be here with you. To make use of this 15, 20 minutes, I would like to focus on three key points, vision, capital, and impact. I'm gonna keep it very simple and short. All of you have stories, and Alex, to start with you. Why you do what you do and why it matters? And the same question applies for everyone. Alex, please go ahead. Yeah, so I work for iTech Capital. Uh, we're a VC fund that invests in Series A to Series B. Uh, and we really think we do an important job to help scale businesses internationally uh, and really reach the next milestone so they can deliver great services to, to clients and businesses and yeah. Thank you. Valerie? Yeah, good, uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, so I've been in tech for a long time. I've been an engineer. Being a woman hasn't been, uh, hasn't been very, uh, not easy, but unusual. So I had a lot of male uh, male uh, colleague uh, all along my career and then uh, um, I am now in charge of a uh, center of excellence for artificial intelligence in uh, Sorbonne University Abu Dhabi and next to that I'm also an investor in tech and I'm glad to see that there are uh, more, many more women in the tech space that's great we have invested into uh, one uh, founder who is female and has a beautiful company in the US Chronicle so I hope that uh, many, uh, it will be many more women in tech as well. Thank you, Valerie. Ben, why you do what you do and why it matters? Why you do what you do and why it matters? My name is Ben. I'm from IDCM, um, a cryptocurrency exchange. So basically my own field, I come from a more traditional financial field where I have done for a listed company before. I've also been a closed door fund operator. So moving from a more traditional financial field to today cryptocurrency and blockchain, um, I feel that there's a lot of cultural as well as differences when you go and enter in this new industry. And I think a lot of that will actually be discussed within this panel discussion today. Thank you, Ben. Artyom, please. Hello? Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm Artyom. I'm uh, from Uplift Launchpad and I'm a head of research department. And uh, our research department is, uh, uh, our research department uh, evaluates pre-IDO uh, pre projects. So we are looking for the uh, possible, like, uh, potential in the projects, uh, high growth, high-growing projects with uh, some great potential. Yeah. Thank you, Artyom. James, welcome aboard. Thank you very much for joining us. James Wu is the CEO and founder at DFG. Tell us why you do what you do and why it matters. Uh, thank you. I, uh, hello, everyone. This is James from DFG. So I started crypto VCs back to 2015. Uh, start with $20 million uh, internally support from my family. We don't raise LPs. 
Uh, luckily, we are in the industry for very early stage, so we invest in different kind of exchange, uh, this kind of C5 equity deals, and also the layer one protocols in the early stage. So right now, we are manage a billion dollar with all different assets of you know tokens and equities. Thank you very much, James. Valeri, you are the only one of the celebrated female leaders on the stage. You have scores of stories. Tell us where do you invest and how do you support women-led projects worldwide? Well, I think uh, in, uh, we're a global fund. We, have, uh, we, ha we are dedicated to blockchain technology. We are not a crypto fund, so we invest uh, only in, uh, in equity. Uh, and we are uh, supporting our companies, portfolio companies, with putting all our network uh, together and helping them to accelerate in different uh, regions of the world. So we have 40 decentralized uh, general partner. And uh, we have uh, seven women as general partner. Uh, and we have just invested in our first female founder. So I think uh, it's about uh, bringing more women in the investment uh, field. It's about uh, bringing more women in tech and being also a role model for the younger one. Thank you, Valerie. In the audience, do we have any women-led startups or entities? Raise your hands. So we have one, three, and four, five. So Valerie is the person, contact person, Valerie, to, to extend your legacy. Let's celebrate that. Artem, my question is for you. So you have a launch pad. And during our earlier discussion, you said you have a specific way to identify promising projects and those projects that are not interesting for you. Give us an idea, how do you select projects and how do you invest? Yeah, so actually I have theoretical physics background and uh, right now I'm trying to bring some scientific methodology to uh, evaluate uh, the projects. Obviously you cannot apply like from the book DCF approach um, to, to the projects, most of them are, uh, all of them are pri private companies, so you have no access to financial statements, so you need some different approach. And we developed approach with three stages. First stage is like the formal analysis when, where we analyze uh, the team, the communication channels, white paper, roadmap, uh, advisor board, uh, strategy, marketing strategy, it's like formal analysis and if we have enough confirmation to uh, see that, uh, the co that the team are, are willing to finish the product, uh, we go to the next stage. Uh, next stage is the competitive analysis where we, uh, first we ask uh, uh, we, we ask the team what they are um, see as their competitors and also we add our own com um, the competitor that we see and uh, if we see the potential uh, if we see the possibility that uh, the particular project can uh, have some some significant part of the market then um, uh, we uh, say that uh, the project passes the second stage and the third stage is the quantitative stage where we try to uh, calculate or estimate the APY and APR of the project to show um, our, um, our investors, uh, our community and uh, also we uh, set the limit how much the project can raise um, uh, on the our launch pad. So this is like three stages that each project undergo on our launch pad. Thank you very much, Artyom. Ben, what is the impact of crypto trading platforms and how do you work and help startups and companies that are interested in becoming part of Web3? Think about it itself, as I think my uh, fellow speaker already mentioned, when it comes to the launch pad, they do a lot of evaluation of the companies. But very much when it comes to us, they're looking at listing it and making it available to the public. So that's talking about secondary market. So if the evaluation was done well, we, the company has done its tokenomics, its plan, its utility, its roadmap, then we know that there is an economic value when the person purchases a token on our platform. 
Because at the end of the day, we are looking at transactional volume and also bring the right type of token project to the audience. So if it's done right, the K line will reflect it. If it's done wrong, then you cannot blame that liquidity does not go to your project. Because many project partners always come abroad and say, can I have liquidity? Does your platform have liquidity? But there are token projects launched every day. Why should the liquidity go to your project? I think that's the question to be asked. Thank you very much, Ben. Alex, when we were having a chat, you gave a good insight that you are one of the early investors at the Bitfury. And Bitfury had a vision that most didn't believe in. How did you come to the point that you believed in the Bitfury, you made an investment and turned out to be one of the most, and that investment became the most important investment for a company to scale? How did you realize there is a potential in Bitfury? So I think uh, when we first were introduced to Bitfury and to the management, we first had to be convinced about the future of crypto. Uh, so our first investment was around the early 2014 and whether or not Bitcoin really was going to be significant. Uh, and then the other side was about whether they could really scale their mining operations and you know, whether a hardware play in a very software driven kind of environment made sense. Uh, and at the end, we realized that having you know, physical infrastructure, a uh, large distributed team really paid off in that there was a tangible product that we could see, we could uh, measure, we could hit certain KPIs. And so effectively, with our relationship and with the team, we ended up uh, helping them to scale and uh, to grow the business. And, and ultimately, they were right. Uh, so Bitcoin obviously has become much more successful today. To continue my question about a vision, Imagine, obviously, there are companies here looking for funding. What kind of advice would you give them to convince you to invest into their companies? Right, so there's three key points I usually tell people when they're looking for funds. Uh, and that's what I like to call the WTF framework. And the first is what. So clearly, concisely, what's your idea? Don't like dance around it just in one sentence. What are you doing? The second and the most important is traction. So I want to be able to have some tangible things that you can point to, that I can present in an investing committee, and that uh, you know, is real. And then the final is funding. What are you asking for? What are the terms? How do you see this deal structured? And I think if you can hit those key, three key points, then the conversation can go into more depth and we can start doing due diligence. But really, I would say traction is, is the number one thing you need to display. Um, whether it's community, whether it's financial, whether it's any sort of KPIs that are core to your business. Thank you. James, I was reading some of the articles about you, and they were quite interesting. To generalize my question, why do traditional industries have to become part of Web3? Give us some ideas, and how do you make investments? Yeah, I, I think, you know, uh, if they don't become a Web3, they will lose market share again and again, right? Uh, just imagine, you know, uh, we have layer one protocol being very mature these days, uh, you know, uh, with a certain uh, Polkadot, Solana, Avalanche, all other kind of layer one protocols become mature and gradually starting itself, the scalability issues have a better ecosystem, which means that the uh, infrastructure and the tools for this kind of protocol are very solid. Then you can build a lot of great end user application on top of it, right? You know, uh, we see the last bull market with DeFi become popular, uh, NFT become popular, gaming become popular, now Metaverse and others, right? So we will see that this kind of end user application, the app, start to change the, you know, a little bit about traditional market everywhere. You know, DeFi changed the financial market, gaming, GameFi changed the traditional gaming company. So if they don't embrace the, you know, the, the, uh, the crypto, they don't embrace the, uh, the blockchain technology, they will kind of start to lose market share. That's why they have to do that. That's very helpful. To continue my point, can you give us a couple of ideas? What projects do you invest in and why? Okay, so I think the most important, you know, uh, criteria in our investment uh, philosophy is really about the team. You know, we see so many uh, projects can uh, show the excellent deck and other materials to you and great vision, but there's no team that which can realize that mission. That's actually the most important things, you know, because everyone can tell a good story. Everyone can say, okay, I can, you know, do something very big. But the important thing is like, uh, whether you have a solid team, very experienced, 
uh, with, with good technology, build strong product, we can realize that vision. That's actually the most important thing that we uh, make the investment decision. Thank you very much. Valerie, for you, I have one very special question. And for gentlemen, another question. You are making a huge, enormous social impact. And to continue the social impact in less developed and developing countries, what actions are you taking to help women in less developed countries? Look, I mean, uh, I think uh, being a role model, I also mentor some young leaders here. Uh, and then uh, the action is probably through the, through the blockchain technology because I think, uh, uh, as I said, I think uh, AI is a dry technology. It's, very, uh, it's a set of tools uh, of tool to analyze a large data set. I think uh, blockchain has, uh, has um, uh, is underlying values. Uh, ethical values uh, to make the, the world a better place. I mean, uh, with blockchain, you can you can bank unbanked uh, people around uh, the world. I think it will also help uh, decrease the corruption in emerging market because it brings quite a lot of transparency. So I think there is also the philosophy behind all the decentralization, and uh, so it's going to it's go it has the potential to bring quite a lot of uh, transformative changes in our society. Uh, and I hope uh, women will also benefit from that. I think it's an industry where we see a lot of women. Uh, and that's great to see, so I would uh, really encourage that. Thank you very much, Valerie. Question for James, or Tom, Ben, and Alex. The same question for all of you, starting with James. Everybody spoke what to do. Give us one insight, what not to do, and then we're gonna recap, please, James. Uh, I think what not to do is really about, you know, um, follow the trend closely. You know, cause the trend always shift, right? So, you know, DeFi will be popular, was popular for six months. Then the trend shift to NFT, popular for six months, shift to GameFi. So what's not to do for both project and the VCs are like, uh, don't catch the trend. Don't kind of like, uh, now DeFi is popular, you are starting investing DeFi. That's not the right way to do. Just focus on what you believe and focus on what you are good at, then make good investment. And also for the project as well, what you're good at. Oh, okay, find a pinpoint for the, for the market, and this is the problem we want to solve, and just focus on that. And one day, if it's a problem, then you can solve it, then you will be popular. So don't catch the trend. I think that's the most important criteria in this industry. Alex? Yeah, maybe I'll just disagree on one point. Uh, I think sometimes it's a good idea to lean into you know, trends and momentum. Uh, when somebody else has already carved away and done the hard work of you know, breaking an industry and making it a new one, like DeFi, it's much easier to come in now, raise funds, and capitalize on this movement than it would be when you're a pioneer. So taking this pioneer path is not necessarily the only way to success. Sometimes just being better at the big prevailing trend might be also a key to success. Interesting, Alex. Thank you very much. I'm going to come back to you. Artyom what not to do for companies to be successful? Oh, so uh, I have like, uh, I can name so, so many don'ts uh, that uh, projects uh, are, with, with, these, with these don'ts projects are always rejected. So one of them is uh, like you, the project has tokenomics which contains only TGE date, uh, only token distribution and total supply. And uh, uh, this is like all that they have in their uh, white paper. So you, you cannot, uh, in 2022, you cannot have this. You should have vesting, you should have staking rewards, you should uh, like have the unlock schedule. You should have the roadmap for the project that is, uh, that correlates with uh, your unlock schedule, with your tokenomics in general, and with your build, uh, business model. Uh, all these three things should um, support each other. Uh, otherwise, uh, this project from me, from evaluator point of view, it just, uh, um, it's not worth time and effort to look at this project. And so this is the advice for the project you should have, like the, you should develop this, this part uh, of the project. Thank you, Artem. 
Ben, what not to do to become successful? I think there are a lot of emphasis in this industry about raising of funds. So the, it's always about hype, building up the tra traction to get an investor to pump the money in. But what happens after that? At the core of it, it's still a business. So what are you going to do with the funds that you acquire? How do you make sure that there's utility within your business? How do you plan your roadmap for that particular token to be used? How are you going to make your organic operations absorb that token that you're going to circulate? So what not to do is not to just focus on what happens before you get the money, but rather what happens after you get your funds. Thank you very much for our panelists, for Valerie, for being the great, great model. Thank you very much for having us and over to you. Thank you so much for moderation and please give it up to our amazing panelists.